This video is presented with the intent of further developing your understanding and application of ethical principles, legal obligations, and the relationship between healthcare professionals and their patients. Watch as we present a scenario involving a challenging dental care situation. Dr. Nate Ralston, a general dentist, has a long-standing and cordial relationship with the town's periodontists, Dr. Bailey and Dr. Charles. In the past, when Dr. Ralston has referred patients to either specialist, they have been referred back to him for general care once their periodontal treatment was completed. That pattern seems to have changed, and Dr. Ralston has begun to wonder why none of his recently referred patients have been referred back to him by either colleague. Now, he is receiving a phone call from a patient he had referred to Dr. Bailey. Hello, this is Dr. Ralston. Mrs. Dean, I haven't seen you for a while. How are you? I've been wondering how your treatment with Dr. Bailey turned out. Oh, Dr. Ralston, I'm glad you asked. Hey, I'm on lunch right now, but that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you about. I don't know what to do. I am confused about everything, and I was hoping you could help me. Well, I'll try. Listen, Dr. Bailey and his entire staff are truly wonderful. He said they had the problem that you referred me for under control. Of course, it involved surgery, just like you told me. Okay, I hope that went well. It did. But the problem is that now he wants me to come in four times a year for these specialty cleanings and evaluations. He said I have a high risk for gum disease, and that general dentists like you can't handle that, which is why you referred me to him. Charges a lot more than you do, and in fact, it's a bit more than my insurance will cover. I don't think I can afford this optimal specialty care that he says I have to have. He also said I could relapse or some such thing if I don't come in regularly, and that he can't have that kind of patient in his practice. He said he would drop me as a patient if I miss any of these appointments. <sighs> what do you advise me to do, Dr. Ralston? Well, how should Dr. Ralston handle this? You may pause the video here and consider the options, or you may continue on to the next section. Here are some possibilities that may have occurred to you. Perhaps it would be beneficial to rate each possibility as absolutely, you are entirely in agreement, probably, you think it is a good idea, 50-50, you are not sure, doubtful, you don't think it is a good idea, or no way, you entirely disagree. You may pause the video after each possible solution to consider the implications of each option. Should Dr. Ralston confine his comments to reinforcing the desirability of optimal care? Suggest that the patient make an appointment with him. Invite doctors Charles and Bailey to lunch to discuss what appears to be a change in referral patterns. Explore with the Ethics Committee of the Component Society what might constitute overtreatment. Now let us rate the importance of each of these contributing factors as you weigh what is important in your considerations. Rate each one as decisive, important, not clear, little importance, or irrelevant. These contributing factors are as follows. The patient's financial situation. the implication that the generalist is not competent to maintain the patient. A change in the trust level between the patient and Dr. Ralston. The accuracy of informed consent so the patient understands all choices.
the patient's freedom to choose the level of care they desire. The importance of optimal oral care. Many dental practitioners face ethical dilemmas such as this one on any given day, anticipating how you might deliberate to find a suitable resolution to any such dilemma is good preparation and can aid each practitioner to find their way out of the challenging questions they sometimes must face.